You ever drive by your ex's profile and you think, oh, come on, she can't still look good. She can't look good, right? She can't look good. God, she still looks good. I didn't think so. These, the Minnesota North Stars, the Minnesota Wild. I mean, I want to say they came to play. They absolutely came to play, especially in the first half of that game. But that one stings for a couple of reasons. Number one, that is the avalanche I thought I was going to see. That was the all five guys, all forward, all the time. And they gave Minnesota everything they could handle. Minnesota was holding on for dear life. But ultimately, the difference in the game was the avalanche who were in they were incredible on the power play this last stretch. They go 0 for 4 or 0 for 5, but that shorthanded goal, it was like a two-goal swing. And they were able to get one back, but Gustafson as well. Gustafson, the power play, and the shorthanded goal. That's what ultimately allowed, I don't want to say our ex, but, you know, our, our disregarded wife allowed her to have her day. Now, does that mean, does that change any sort of outlook? Absolutely not. If anything, it confirmed what I was hoping, that when the Avalanche are healthy, which they mostly are other than just two forwards, it is five guys blasting forward, overwhelming the other team. And if you watch that game, they continued and continued, and eventually it wore down Minnesota. Minnesota was holding on for dear life, and if they were to ever play in a seven-game series... It's going to wear them down just like it did every other team that the Avalanche played last year. I have minimal concerns about the Colorado Avalanche long term. I just think a sloppy first period and a shorthanded goal in the second, that's ultimately what did them in. But that was tough to take. Tough to take because before the game, I felt like there were a legion of people taking the Avalanche who have done so much right by us since we've been backing them. But interestingly enough, the Minnesota Wild have went tit for tat for them in this second half of the year. And it was that Kaprasov injury that kind of put me off of them. Because if you saw those games right after Kaprasov was gone, that wacky like 7-5 game versus St. Louis, then they lost on the road to Arizona. So like many of these teams in this final stretch, it was pumping the brakes. But kudos to Minnesota. Get your laughs in now. Get your laughs in now because we're going to see what happens if the Avalanche be seeing you in round two. But don't forget, you're the team who hasn't won a single playoff round since I was a kid. And you've had multiple opportunities, but we'll revisit that at a later date because all Avalanche things aside, we do have quite a few games here on this Thursday. You know, Tuesdays and Thursdays have those big slate and you can definitely choose a game or two or three a lot of big favorites on this one to utilize bet 365 same game parlays that they have on there and bet 365 is giving you a promotion where you bet one dollar on anything you want to bet on the bruins to bounce back after that bad loss they're playing the jackets at home who the rangers just cracked you can take the bruins with brad marchand that puts you at plus money if you can go to uh, Bet365 and bet a dollar on that, they're going to credit your account with $365 in free bet credits. It's a great promotion. It's only available for a limited time, and you just got to make sure that you're over 21 and located in a state that has Bet365 or province and that sports betting is permitted in those locations. And if you have that problem, I got a problem with the way things ended but not a gambling problem just yet. But if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. So Thursday night, I'm just going to get right into the picks. The Tampa Bay Lightning, speaking of exes, checking their profiles. Well, I checked their profile the other day, and they had a very good win over the Carolina Hurricanes, a team who got a lot of issues on their hand going into the playoffs. But the Lightning needed one of those. That was like a Lightning playoff-esque victory. They relied on their stars to provide the offense. Vasilevsky played well. They collapsed a little on defense, got themselves a shutout, four to nothing. Now they're getting back on the ice. They're at home against Washington, who just played the Islanders last night, two to one shootout loss. They're essentially eliminated from the playoffs. I, I'm going to go with the Lightning at home coming off of a shutout. You guys know I typically like taking teams, usually with unders after a shutout. But, you know, just this final 10 games, it's just, it's that chaos that I keep bringing up. So, you know, I am hesitant about unders. You know I'm the biggest unders guy there ever was. 
but just this final stretch of the like you will not see me take a single over for the most part all playoffs if i'm gonna take one it's gonna be in the first four games of round one but then never again so you guys know um that i normally would take unders but just because it's the end of the season but i like the lightning and i even like the lightning to cover the puck line when you have that shutout for nothing win I believe that kind of confidence and whatever that is rolls into the next game. That's a good team they beat in Carolina. Now they come home. I think they're going to build off of that, especially heading into playoffs, starting to play a little bit, just getting back into that playoff brand, which we know that they can default back into as we learned about good and well last year. So I'll take the lightning over the Washington Capitals by one. Yeah, but I'll even take the puck line. Moving over to another game. I think the New Jersey Devils... I've alluded to this all year. They It wasn't as catastrophic as we originally thought. And I'll even take blame for this one. And by we, I mean me. I thought the Devils were going to kind of sail right out of things, just like many of the teams that we said were going to sail right out of things. All those Sabres type team, they're all out of Detroit sail, Sabres. Uh, but New Jersey was the one that held up. But guess what? They have, I think, a two-point advantage. Or they're possibly tied. I think they have a two-point advantage on the Rangers, or they're tied in points. So I truly believe. I, 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 I and I'm not, I'm not a clickbait kind of guy. I often say regular season is fake hockey. It's to a certain extent when you get to the end and teams need games, need points. Like as you saw that wild Colorado game, that my friends is real hockey where refs, they don't want to call too many penalties. It's going balls to the wall. Everything is just holding speed burst all game long. And I'm not kidding. I think this Devils game on their home ice versus the Rangers is going to dictate who gets home ice in round one. And if the Devils don't get home ice in round one, an inexperienced team with a goalie who they don't know what they're going to get going into the garden with Shesterkin and all those guys... That's going to be the end of them, and their whole year is just going to crumble like that. And I really think it comes down to this one game. I truly think the Devils' whole season comes down to this singular game. Because if they lose it, I don't think they're going to reclaim the division lead. And then all of a sudden, they're in that three seed. They start at MSG with those Rangers, brought in all those guys. Shesterkin's rounding into form. I think that spells the end of the Devils. So you got to think the Devils are going to really want this one. Doesn't necessarily mean I think they're going to win it, but I do think they will be hell-bent on trying to, to get a lead, getting pucks to the net, shooting a lot. I don't even know what the over on Igor Shesterkin's saves are, but I'm telling you right now, anything under 30, I'll take it. I'll take over 29 and a half saves for Igor Shesterkin because the Devils have had a couple days to sit on that bad loss versus the Islanders, and I think they're going to come out in the first period guns blazing versus the Rangers. But it doesn't mean I think they're going to win because that Rangers squad, they got all a couple guys who are rolling now. And for all you Ranger fans out there who think, God, I don't never want to watch an Islander fan do these type of videos. I got better things to do than to keep the Rangers off my ticket because I'm an Islanders fan. When they're the right team, I'm going to take them. I'm not 100% sure, obviously, that... They're going to win, but something tells me they're, it's going to be close. It's either going to be close to a win or a win, which means if you want to throw a plus one five in something, here, hold the plus, plus one and a half. I'm going to take the Rangers to win. I'm going to do it because they have experienced players. I think they know how to play a big game like this. And to me, the question marks are all on New Jersey for this game. So the pressure is going to be on Jersey. I'll take the Rangers. But then if we go over to Caesars or Bet365, here's a little one, little uh, kind of insurance policy. I want to go Rangers plus one and a half with Patrick Kane to register a point. If you watched his hands last game, he seemed to get that confidence going. And I'm also very tempted to take Philip Heedle. You know how he gets when he's hot. I took him last game to register a point. I think Kane and Heedle are both good candidates to register a point against the Devils. I think there will be goals scored in this game. Give me the Rangers, though. I'll take the Rangers to beat the Devils and really start the plunge that I was going to forecast. But I think people were already starting to say that. I think people already were going to pick the Rangers over the Devils, even if they didn't have home ice. Oilers, Kings. They played twice this year. Home teams won both times. 
Every time you want to go Oilers, I feel like you shouldn't. And every time you don't want to go Oilers, I feel like you should. Everybody was chastising me for that pick against Vegas, but I felt supremely confident. Then you had LA who lost against Calgary by one goal, close game. They scored once. All goals were scored in the first period, and then a goal wasn't scored again. So I think when you're dealing with Edmonton, you start with both teams over one and a half goals. Now the question is, who do I want to go with? I'll give you the option. You can take the Oilers, and then that will put you a nice plus 125. Or I don't want to take the Kings plus one and a half because of how the Oilers do business. I either want both teams over one and a half, Kings plus two and a half, or Edmonton to win. Let's do that. Edmonton had a huge win. It wouldn't, I don't put it past them though. Like, you know, that whole forgive and forget. I haven't forgotten how many games that Edmonton just didn't show up in the way that you'd expected. Kind of like Vegas. They got outplayed by Vegas when they played in Edmonton. And then all of a sudden they show up in Vegas and do the opposite. So. I think Edmonton should take this one. The Kings, they had that great homestand, but things are different on the road. That road cooking is always a little different. So I'll go both teams over one and a half goals and the Edmonton Oilers to take that one. And those are the picks that I got for you on a Thursday. Yeah, there are other games, but there are things that I don't know about these teams. Like Carolina, they can't score. So to think they're just going to go into Detroit and win that one, I don't know. I got to see if they can figure things out over there. And then... You have the Sharks who are coming off a shutout win. I don't know if I trust Vegas going to that. Not a lot of trust this time of year. Not yet. Not yet. But what are we at now? About two two or so weeks away from playoffs. I'm looking forward to it big time. But those are my picks for Thursday. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Shopper channel here. Uh, come follow me on social media. It's at Andy Francis. And I will see you tomorrow.